So I'm here today to tell you about a party and then to invite you to it. Thank you. And goodbye. No. So basically, this started about two years ago. My sister and I were looking at each other, and we said, our mother is turning 60 this year. And being very good children, we wanted to do something extraordinary for her. And so my sister said, let's throw a legendary party. And I said, yes, we need to get a confetti cannon. And that never happened, and I'm still holding out for that. But my mother was included in this conversation, and she said, let's do 60 hours of art. And we all three looked at each other and said, that is a wild idea. So wait, that would be five days, 12 hours a day, making art, inviting our friends, and we would just do the wild and crazy ideas that we'd always neglected because we never had time. And so we said, sure, let's do it. And then my mother's boyfriend, Noel, said, let's do this at Beulah Land. What is Beulah Land? Beulah Land is a 150-year-old farmhouse uh, on 40 acres of land out near Risingville, New York. If anyone knows where that is, I congratulate you and also commiserate with you. It is out past uh, Camp Bell, past Bath. It is about a 25-minute drive from here. And in the summer of 1972, this young couple from New Jersey, who were very fascinated with Appalachian art, decided Appalachian art doesn't occur in New Jersey, it occurs in Appalachia, so we're gonna go there. And so they pressed their noses up against the windows of this house, and without ever stepping inside, they said, let's buy it, let's fix it up, which they had a lot to do. And so over the next 25 years, they improved the land, they renovated the house, they turned the house into an art piece itself, they had outdoor sculpture, and eventually won over their neighbors, and in turn were inspired by their neighbors. And so the two of them constructed Supper Time, an eight foot by 11 foot diorama, which was featured in the Smithsonian Museum of Art Appalachian Art Exhibit in 1981. Unfortunately, in 1997, Carol died in a car crash, and Beulah Land went into a dark period, and the outdoor sculptures kind of melted in the rain, and supper time was crated up and is now a hotel for mice and bugs, and it, it fell silent. And then about a couple years ago, I came back from Portland, Oregon, and I saw the potential in Beulah Land, and I thought it was the perfect place to have parties. <laughs> And these parties with artists just naturally turn into salons. And we also wanted an international flair. So this is Koninnedag, which is Dutch Queen's Day. Uh, but obviously, the perfect choice for 60 hours of art. So the founders, me. I'm an artist. I'm a traveler. I love bells, as you can see. My mother, she is also an artist and a retired environmental planner, so she likes to get dirty. Noel is a photographer, a welder, and as we learned before, the proprietor of Beulah Land. And then my sister, uh, who lives in Germany, and she's the self-proclaimed non-artist of the group. So over three months, we rallied and we organized this five-day party. And we even had a Kickstarter project for it. But really, we all looked at each other and said, can we actually pull this off? Can we do it? So without further ado, I'm going to run you through everything we did. We made bricks. We had Burma shave signs leading up to the house so you knew you weren't really, well, you were in the middle of nowhere, but you were right where you were supposed to be. We had point, uh, paintball pointillism. That's the end result there. <laughs> Poetry room. Uh, live improv dance, which was videotaped and then projected over improv dance, which was held in front of the tetanus factory. We had a yarn bombing project that my sister, the non-creative one, was in charge of. This was a 15-foot maple tree that was covered with knitting and crocheting that people could contribute beforehand from across the world, and people who were there could just sit in the, underneath the shade of a tree and knit all day. My friend did a performance art piece called the Holly Museum in a turkey coop. We had plein air painting. 
We had a hunting blind, which was decorated and is used as a hunting blind. We had more things. That the, here we go. We had meditation. We had a blank slate mobile, which was contributed by an Ithaca artist. It came to us white, and over five days, we turned it into this. We had the work glove TV antenna art installation. This was, this was 60 pieces of art. This was a, a drawing that my mother did, chopped into 60 pieces, sent them off to people who couldn't be at the festival. They decorated them, sent it back, we put it back together. We had performances. We had literal videos. We had piñatas. This is my favorite. We had BB gun poetry firing range. We took a 60 word poem, put one word per target, spent 60 minutes shooting at it, and whatever survived was ranged into a new poem. <laughs> we had the safety room. We also had a science and electricity uh, demo. Helga made an appearance. And we released more than 100 uh, sky lanterns, which was pretty magical. And then it was over, and we did it, and it was great. And we said, let's just go back to how things were. And then we did 61 hours of art. <laughs> this was this past summer. We had more Burma Shave signs. We had shadow puppets. We had a hanging garden using planters that were made out of hubcaps. We had an outhouse making Beulah Land officially country. And in the outhouse, we have photo collages of Noel's work, which were of trailers of his neighbors and TV evangelists. We had a treadle machine, a sewing machine, so we could have it out in the yard. You don't need power. And we made a pinwheel design quote with that. More performances. We had welding. This was a couch surfer, actually, who was putting together a photo booth project. More piñatas. We had um, a local ceramic uh, artist who worked with one of Noel's neighbors, used, used farm equipment, and put together his own potter's wheel, and then pit-fired the stuff later on in the week. We had floating lanterns, and we had a bonfire every single night, both 60 and 61 hours. Our seven-year-old Sophia wanted to do a god's eye, and she wanted to set a record. So we made a 61-inch god's eye, which currently holds the record on recordsetter.com. We made paper. And then our international flair this year was you could download a JPEG of a, of a pinwheel, put it together, go someplace awesome, take a picture. This was at the Great Wall of China, as you can tell. <laughs> we had a blue tarp slip and slide, tie-dye. We had the recycled runway show, Recycled. High tea, the fun machine, more plein air painting. We had a vintage clothing shop, which was nestled in an apple tree. We had more uh, TV antenna art installations. This one was shot up aluminum cans. And then we had a Rube Goldberg machine that started on the roof of the shop and finally ignited the final bonfire. And then, of course, more sky lanterns. So overall, just in two years, we have more than 130 people, a lot from this area, a lot from around the world. And then this is a nice condensed version of everything we did. But looking ahead at 62 hours, we want to surprise ourselves this year. We want to invite you, people like you, people with wild ideas. And we're not just saying artists. We're saying scientists, gardeners, cooks, anybody who wants to come together, play, connect, collaborate. And you know, the most surprising part about this is that it started as a backyard birthday party. But it keeps going on in its own right. And it's that that beautiful feeling that your wild idea turned into a successful idea. And this successful idea is a safe haven for more wild ideas. Thank you very much.